Country's News Authority, 1390 WCSC Charleston. It's 7.30. Good morning, I'm Charlie Davis, 1390 WCSC News. The U.S. Navy is riding shotgun in the Persian Gulf. The Pentagon disclosed yesterday that a group of four warships provided escort to a Kuwaiti freighter hauling a load of American tanks and arms to Bahrain. Officials say other ships in the strife-torn Gulf will be escorted on a case-by-case -case basis, despite criticism that such action may lead to more American casualties there. Michelin Tire Corporation has announced a major expansion of three South Carolina plants. Michelin plans to nearly double the production capacity at its Lexington County plant and will also expand its plants in Anderson and Spartanburg counties. And that'll mean about 500 new jobs, which Governor Carol Campbell, of course, welcomes. They're going to add several hundred new jobs, both at the salaried and hourly level. And they're going to be a big boost to the workforce that they, of course, have applied, uh, have provided such great opportunity for before. Michelin plans to begin its expansion later this year. The company will be spending about $200 million to expand its three South Carolina plants and a fourth in Alabama. More government salaries are now public information and government bodies can no longer hold secret meetings now that Governor Campbell has signed the state's new Freedom of Information Act into law. Campbell calls the new stronger law a great service for South Carolinians. A quick check of the traffic now. Here's Janet Conklin. Well, traffic is doing a little better than it was a little while ago. We we had a couple of problems earlier. One at Azalea and King Street Extension. This one has been cleared up now. The wreck on Remount Road near the Magic Market has also been taken care of at this time. We have the regular tie-ups on Highway 61, Cosgrove Avenue, the I-26 eastbound, but no real unusual accidents right now. Janet Conklin, WCSE Traffic Watch. The hot ticket in the job market. That story is next after this for Traveler's Health Network. Excuse me, is anyone sitting here? Uh, no, be my guest. You're new here, right? Uh, yeah, just started today. <laughs> They're driving me crazy up in personnel. All those know? decisions, right? Right. I yeah. hope you chose the Traveler's Health Network as your health plan. That's the company with the red umbrella in the ads, right? Right. Yeah, the I Traveler's know. Health Network is a health maintenance organization that provides quality health care services at affordable prices for you and every member of your family. <laughs> I'm not married. Oh, good. I mean, you should sign up with the Traveler's Health Network. They cover hospitalists. 100% with no deductibles. Mm. They cover routine doctor visits with at most a small per visit copayment. Oh. And you can choose from Traveler's Health Network endorsed doctors in the neighborhood. <laughs> you sound like a commercial. Well, I am taking acting lessons. <laughs> There's never been a better time to join the Traveler's Health Network. Anyone who's eligible now and works for a participating company can sign up or switch to our plan. Just ask at work or call our office at 723-7835. The Traveler's Health Network. Nothing covers you better. CSC News Time is 730 Based on the number of on-campus job interviews, accounting graduates have been in most demand this year at the University of South Carolina and at Clemson, too. Clemson's nationally known for its engineering programs, but placement director Al Mathiasen says the demand for engineering graduates was down a bit. The College Placement Council said it was 44% lower this year than last year for engineers. Uh, I don't think we're that much lower. I haven't compared it to last year's yet. I haven't had a chance, but uh, it, it definitely is lower than last year. Interestingly, Mathiasen described the demand for mechanical and electrical engineering grads as very strong, and USC's placement director described the engineering demand there as always strong. The House has passed a number of amendments to an auto insurance reform bill. The bill's already passed the Senate, and yesterday the House voted to drop a portion of the measure that would have greatly increased insurance rates for younger drivers. The House will continue debating that bill today. Did you by any chance try to call someone in Gaffney yesterday? It was probably a lost cause. Computer problems cut off phone service to about 20 20,000 customers in Gaffney and Cherokee County for about four hours yesterday. Phone company officials say the problem's been taken care of now. Oh, a 22-year-old woman from Chile is the new Miss Universe. Judges voted the honor to Cecilia Baloco at the contest held in Singapore late last night. Miss Italy was voted runner-up. Miss USA was third. CSE News Time is 734. The Wall Street Journal report is next. Southern Bell asked John Nesbitt, author of Megatrends, to discuss the relationship of our business services to future trends in business. John, you've said we're already in the information society. Is it really affecting our lives? Oh, sure. Already about 73% of Americans work in information jobs. So that makes the tools of communication absolutely vital. Southern Bell has found that to be true for small businesses as well as large. Oh, I, I, think, I think a good communication service is particularly crucial for a small business competing with larger businesses. Well, that's what our prestige service is designed to do. And it 
allows, and this is really the important thing, a small business to tap into the most advanced communications technology available today. And best of all, you know, a company can add new features whenever they need them because Prestige is a central office-based service. That means the system can grow as they grow. That's the great advantage of the Prestige service. It's really an excellent way of anticipating the future. Southern Bell, the Bell South Company, already in touch with the future. This is the Wall Street Journal report. The dollar continues to rise this morning. I'm Ian McLeod. More in a moment. And so thermal efficiency is increased You are listening to a lecture at one of America's foremost institutions of higher learning, a Mercedes-Benz service training center. The fuel injection system is both mechanical Where technicians gather periodically to attend hands-on training seminars on the scrupulous care and maintenance of the Mercedes-Benz automobile. So if a malfunction occurred, what then? Anyone? Courses that include everything from new product information to problem diagnosis and quality now, control. Turn to page 61 of your manual. What emerges from this intensive schooling are some of the best informed, most accomplished technicians in the industry. Professionals trained to do the job right the first time and who exhibit an extraordinary commitment to owner care. At Mercedes-Benz, credentials are not handed out. They are earned. Now... Mr. Michaels? Mercedes-Benz, extending the value of car ownership far beyond the car itself. The dollar continues to surge on the heels of yesterday's big rally. At last check in Europe, the dollar quoted at 144 and a quarter yen, 1.82 and three quarters marks, and just a dollar 60.9 to the pound. Just yesterday, President Reagan says he doesn't want to see a dollar nosedive. Later this morning, the government will release the first quarter merchandise balance of trade numbers, and economists expect the figure to reflect the improvement that became evident in March. A smaller deficit would pressure the dollar higher. A disappointing figure could knock it back. Stocks took off on the dollar rally. The Dow Industrials jumped 54.74 to 22.97.94. Gainers led losers by nearly 4 to 1, but trading was sluggish. Precious metals continue to slide as the dollar rises. London morning fixed gold, $447.90 an ounce, down $3.5 from the New York close. London silver opened at $7.56 bid, up 4 cents from New York, where the dollar lost 69 cents yesterday. This is the Wall Street Journal report. The Dow Industrials notched their third largest point gain ever yesterday, a big 54.74 to close just over two points short of the 2300 level. Eric Miller, chief investment officer at Donaldson, Lufkin & Genret, says that was fine, but... We've had so many 50-point days up and down that where they were once a uh, most unique and, and uh, great event, uh, the fact that we've had several of them now over the last couple of months uh, makes each one by itself less and less significant. Yesterday's volume was a sluggish 152.5 million shares, and Miller doesn't see much in the way of volume for a while. Today's journal reports the founder of Crazy Eddie's, the big electronics discount chain, has sold at least $68 million of the company's stock since late 1984. The money could help finance a proposed $188 million buyout by Eddie Antar and others. An investor, Asher Edelman, and Canada's Dominion Textile say they are prepared to top a $2 billion-plus buyout offer for Burlington Industries. This is Ian McLeod at the News Desk of the Wall Street Journal. You can hear the next Wall Street Journal report at 10.05 this morning. CSC Coastal Weather. Charlie Hall says we're in for another sunny, hot, and humid day today. Same for tomorrow, in fact. Slight chance of a late-day shower or thunderstorm both days. Highs near 90 inland, 82 on the beaches. For tonight, a clear to partly cloudy sky, the low near 68. In the harbor, winds east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots today, 10 knots or less tonight. Average seas less than a foot. High tide is exactly one hour away. Way at 8.38 this morning. Right now, it's mostly sunny. 68 in North Charleston, 70 downtown. I'm Charlie Davis, WCSC News. Our next news at 8 o'clock. Breaking stories as they occur. Now, Ted Byrne with more Million Dollar Music on 1390 CSC. Thank you, Charlie. Good morning, everybody. 21 minutes in front of 8 o'clock on a beautiful, sunshiny Wednesday morning. Thirteen ninety CSC with Orleans, and that's Million Dollar Music from 1975 with a song called, well, as they say it, Dance For Me, but everybody knows the word's pronounced 
Dance. Dance with me. <laughs> Let's see if you're dancing out there in traffic, okay? Here's our uh, head uh, dancer, Prancer, Comet, and Vixen. Here she is, <laughs> Janet Cockle. Well, traffic's looking just fine out there right now. We had a couple of earlier wrecks, but these have both been cleared up now. The local police are reporting no new problems. Of course, we have our regular old favorite problems. You know, the tie-up on Highway 61 every morning. It's like that. Of course, Cosgrove Avenue is a little bit heavy just for the Navy Yard traffic. I-26 eastbound is heavy just for everybody else coming into work, but no accidents in any of these other regularly heavy areas. Janet Conklin, WCSC Traffic Watch. Thank you, Janet. We have uh, 14 minutes in front of 8 o'clock. And in case you're wondering what's going on with Spoleto... John Kelly presents a multimedia performance art piece at 9 o'clock tonight at the Garden Theater. Kelly and his five performers incorporate dance, song, music, and film into a cohesive work called Pass the Blue Earth Beta. Kelly won the Bessie Award in 1986 for this work, which is based on the life of Austrian painter Egon Schiele. Kelly focuses on the humanity found in Sheila's art, and two love stories are weaved into the portrait of the artist. For tickets to this innovative theatrical event, soon to make its European debut, call the Splato box office at 577-7863. For WCSC Radio, this is Gene Phillips at Spoleto. Thank you, Gene, and uh, I certainly uh, appreciate that information. I know all you Spalatians do, too. Spalatians, that, that's people that... Uh are in town for Spoleto. And they don't know how to drive. That's <laughs> well, they, now, do you think all of our accidents uh, caused lately have been because of Spalatians? We haven't had that many accidents, but yeah. see, the ones that Spalatians cause yes. happen during the middle of the day. Oh, and that's Early right. in the evening hours when they're like going straight in a left turn lane yeah. or turning left in a right turn lane or things like that. If they're like driving down the road looking everywhere but on the road. And they Speaking don't, you know. of which. What? I was looking through this morning's News and Courier. Uh -huh. Of course, there was no this morning's Evening Post. It had to be the News and Courier. Well, that's the only newspaper we have. That's right. On page 2C, everybody reads Ann Landers, right? Uh, yeah. First the horoscope, then the comics, then Ann Landers, then throw it away. <laughs> Page 2C, I want to read this. Except the whole for today, thing. because it's Wednesday and you get all the food coupons. Go ahead. That's true. I got the Wendy's I coupons hate out. Wednesdays. Yesterday, I was traveling south when suddenly traffic came to a dead stop. This is a letter now. Yes, dear Ann Landers. It remained bumper to bumper for a mile and a half. Mm. 20 minutes later, I discovered the cause of the slowdown, an accident on the northbound side. Why was the southbound traffic stopped? Do you know why, Chad? No, why, Janet? Well, she calls them rubberneckers, but yes. we refer to it fondly as the gawk, the gawk factor. I continue. Why do people back up traffic for miles to look at a wreck? I have seen one accident, my own, and I'd prefer to see no more. What's the matter with these folks anyway? Well, what does Ann Landers have to say about she that? She says most people's lives are drab and uneventful. Uh -huh. They enjoy the excitement of an accident. It gives them something to talk about, makes them feel important because they were there. Then, of course, there's morbid curiosity. It's one of the less, Im less impressive factors about human nature. Certainly, certainly. So. The gawk factor made Ann Landers today. Ah. And I've been talking about it for how long? Two years? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Janet Conklin. Slightly ahead of her time. They'll start calling you Panasonic. Eleven in front of eight here on a Wednesday morning. Thirteen ninety CSC with the sounds of the platters, a little uh, finger popping music there for you. I just thought, you know, maybe uh, while you're sitting around the breakfast table, bored with reading the newspaper, bored with the conversation, maybe you want to get up and shag. 
Just thought I'd play that for you. <laughs> Good little song. Speaking of shaggers, Charlie Hall says it's going to be mostly sunny today and a little bit humid. Look for 90 inland, 82 on the beaches. Clear to partly cloudy tonight, low down around 68. Right now, 69 in North Charleston, 70 downtown at 1390 CSC. You doing your Don McNeil imitation? My Don McNeil? You remember him? The Breakfast Club. Yeah. But of course. Shagging around the breakfast shagging table. Shagging around the breakfast table. Yeah. I don't, that's not exactly, I think, what he had in mind. But anyway. Or Aunt Fanny or Sam. Or you remember those old yes, characters? Good yes, heavens. Yes. The, the thing I remember most of all about Don McNeil and the Breakfast Club and all is like during the summertime when yeah. we'd be on vacation. Uh, and we were sitting, you know, riding in the car. Dad would have the radio on. And, of course, we'd be listening to the Don McNeil Breakfast Hour because we always got an early start. Mm -hmm. And then it seems to me my memory serves me correctly. Uh, right after the uh, McNeil Breakfast Club, Paul Harvey would come on yeah, and yeah. tell us the rest of the story. The rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell us the rest of the story? One of other quick piece of trivia, though. i got to ask you. You okay. remember Aunt Fanny on that show? Yeah. She was also on another very famous, very early TV show. Ooh. Her name was, her, her real name was Fran Allison. Yes. yes. She was the Fran in Kukla, Fran, and Ollie. That's correct. Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember well, that. Well, see, one. now you got your education with the morning. Oh, <laughs> a little nostalgia. I think I'll Moving right along to last second hoops. Good morning, everybody. Boston won game five of the NBA Eastern Conference Finals last night, but boy, howdy, how they won it. Larry Bird got 36 points. The Celts win 108-107. Bird stole a pass, inbounds pass from Isaiah Thomas with five seconds left and passed it off to Dennis Johnson, who got the game-winning basket with one second left. And DJ talked about sinking that winning hoop. When I cut down the lane, I was actually off balance from being or, or making a fast move. You know, something I don't do too many times making a fast move. <laughs> but I know I was off balance. And uh, when the ball went up, I saw Joe Dumars come swipe at the ball. And it went down. I mean, I don't think there was nobody happier in that arena than me. The Dallas Mavericks say they'll ask for permission to talk with Milwaukee Bucks coach Don Nelson, and Bucks owner Herb Cole has said that's okay. Nelson has said he doesn't want to coach in Milwaukee any longer, and Dick Motta resigned from the Mavs last week, creating that vacancy. Baseball tonight at College Park. The Rainbows, after winning two over Charleston, West Virginia, have now lost two in a row. Last night, one to nothing. Omar Olivares pitched his heart out, didn't get any support from his teammates. He ought to sue him for none support. Somebody, Sapikoff wrote that this morning, I think. Anyway, it was one to nothing. They'll go for game five and the split of the series tonight at the ball yard. NASCAR has come down on Jeff Bodine for the second time in two weeks, and he just as soon not have heard of this one. They find him 15 big ones, 15,000, and placed him on probation until the end of the year because of rough driving during last weekend's World 600 at Charlotte. I'm Patrick Joyce, WCSC Sports, and that's... The way the ball bounces. American Airlines Summer Super Savers and the American Express Card. They're ideal travel partners. So long, I'll see you later. Gonna take off, don't you know? There's no stopping now, cause here it comes. And there I go. American Summer Super Savers. Fares from $39 to $199 each way based on round-trip coach purchase. To cities throughout the continental U.S., and American always welcomes the American Express Card. Wherever they go, American Express Card members are entitled to a world of unsurpassed privileges and services. Membership has its privileges. So take off with American Summer Super Savers and the American Express Card. Make your reservation seven days in advance. Tickets are non-refundable and restrictions apply. Call your travel agent or American Airlines for details. We're American. in front of 8 o'clock on this Wednesday morning. Stand by. News from ABC and the CSC News Center coming up next. The South Carolina Broadcasters Station of the Year. 
1390 WCSC Charleston. I'm Charlie Davis. Coming up on CSC News, the state education department is not happy with the Charleston County School District, and the reverse of that is also true. Congressman Arthur Ravenel says we should know more about the USS Stark tragedy in a week or so, and government information has just gotten a lot more free in South Carolina. Plus, Charlie Hall's forecast after ABC at 8 o'clock. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Chet Douglas with the latest from ABC News. The office of Vice President George Bush will come in for a closer look at the Iran-Contra hearings. ABC's Bob Clark has more on this morning's leadoff witness. Robert Dutton, a key player in the Contra supply operation, will be the first witness as House and Senate committees resume joint hearings today. He's known to have met with Bush's National Security Advisor, Don Gregg, to discuss Contra problems. The unanswered question is how much Gregg told Bush, who denies any involvement in the private Contra aid network. Dutton's a fairly recent substitute witness, businessman Albert Hakim, had been scheduled to appear today. He'd been talking behind closed doors to investigators, but they say he opened up so many new areas for discussion that they wanted time to check out the information he gave before having him testify publicly. The U.S. has already begun providing protection for Kuwaiti ships in the Persian Gulf War Zone. A merchant ship carrying tanks and an, got an escort yesterday, and President Reagan was looking for other options and for help in that guard duty. The president wants allies and even the other Arab nations to provide support, including air cover, so the U.S. won't have to go it alone. But the president has made one thing clear. Again, U.S. ships will fire back if fired on. I'll have more for you after this. To save time, energy, and frustration, don't start house hunting until you know what you can afford. Hello, I'm Bill Tankersley for your Better Business Bureau. Your bank or savings and loan can give you guidelines on just how much mortgage you can safely carry. But remember, there'll also be insurance, monthly utilities, maintenance costs, and real estate taxes. So don't let a real estate salesperson who works on commission for the seller, not the buyer, pressure you into buying more house than you need or can afford. And don't forget to comparison shop interest rates among various lenders. Even if you think you've found your dream house, hire an appraiser to inspect it for any problems such as termites or flooding. It's also very important to explore the neighborhood to learn about schools, stores, and other community facilities. And finally, don't use all your savings for a down payment. Save some for moving expenses or family emergencies. A consumer tip from your Better Business Bureau. Defrocked television preacher Jim Baker was on ABC's Nightline last night, and he lashed out at Jerry Falwell. I'm convinced that they came here with the motive to, to steal Heritage USA in my ministry. Falwell, of course, as you remember, took over in the gap left by Baker's quick departure. But according to Baker, it wasn't supposed to be forever. I did not choose Jerry Falwell to take my ministry. He said he would be a caretaker and would never even be on the air, never have anything to do except to be a part of, of, of holding it to keep it from a hostile takeover. Baker says turning over the reins to Falwell so quickly and completely was a terrible mistake. Falwell will have a response to all of this in a news conference in a couple of hours. More rain, heavy rain, expected in the southwestern section of Iowa today. Just what that area doesn't need. It's still trying to dig out from flooding that's chased more than a thousand people from their homes. For the first time, a Russian sports team has endorsed American-made products. Yep, the Soviet national tennis teams have just signed a four-year deal to wear shoes and sports clothes made by Nike. A 31-year-old Chicago nurse, Marianne Golden, just wanted some information from the bus driver. But before she could get off, he closed the door and pulled out. Well, that wouldn't have been so bad except for the fact that all of her hadn't gotten through that door and her arm was caught as the bus drove away. Well, she ran alongside, screaming all the way, till finally she got the driver stopped in about half a block or so. And the panicky pedestrian passenger said it was... It was either that, either run along or lose my arm, so she ran. And the whole thing is now being investigated. I'm Chet Douglas, ABC News. CSC News Time is 8.04. I'm Charlie Davis. Good morning. Why isn't the State Department of Education pleased with the Charleston County School District? We listen to the public. We're just not listening to the State Department of Education. That's the problem. That's why we got seriously impaired status. Well, that school board member Edie Carson Cooper is feeling anyway. At a special board meeting last night, the board members reviewed the 40 recommendations given them by a committee of the Education Department. Ideas on how to get 
get that seriously impaired label lifted. The board voted to allow Superintendent Dr. Robert Burke to work on 39 of the 40 recommendations. What we find a tendency... Uh I don't uh, see much in this report that will hinder the county. I see a number of things that will, will help the, the students in Charleston County. The board exempted one area from changes, though, the school district's promotion policy. Two mid-year state budget cuts have created a great deal of instability in local school programs, according to state school superintendent Dr. Charlie Williams. Williams says such action may slow education reform efforts under the Education Improvement Act. What we find a tendency uh, in a short budget year is to shift the cost of some programs that have been funded out of general revenue to EIA, which begins to undercut the ultimate effectiveness of the reform effort by eroding the base on which it was uh, premised. Now, William says some schools have had to eliminate jobs and full-day kindergarten. He's looking for more budget problems next year. Any traffic problems? We'll find that out from Janet Conklin. I just spoke with the local police, and the county officers are on the scene of a wreck in front of West Ashley Toyota on Savannah Highway. Keep in mind, West Ashley Toyota has moved up to number 2100 Savannah Highway. That's closer to the Mark Clark. They're not down by the Ashley River bridges anymore, but the wreck is in front of West Ashley Toyota, 2100 Savannah Savannah Highway. CSC Mobile 7 called in from Folly Road and said traffic is backed up just about to the wind, Dixie. It could go either way. It could get better or it could get worse in the next little while. We'll let you know. Janet Conklin, WCSC Traffic Watch. Communism up close. That story's next. Hello? Hi, Mom. It's me, Larry. Oh, Frank, it's Larry. Mom, I'm in love. Again? No, Mom, this time it's different. She's a dreamboat. Mm-hmm, that's what you say about all of them. Hi, son, what's new? He's in love again. Oh? Yeah, says so she's a dream girl. A dream boat, Mom. Whatever. <laughs> what's she like, son? She's gorgeous, Dad. Mm -hmm. Sleek, beautiful lines. Yeah. Best looking thing at the beach. Uh -huh. Well, now, is this uh, dream boat expensive? Right. <laughs> well, she isn't cheap, but I can afford her. Uh -huh. Got a boat loan from NCNB. Mm. Just applied this morning and I've already been approved. And it was every bit as easy as the car loan I got from NCNB. Great rates and no hassles. Well, congratulations. Son, Thanks. I'm really happy for you. Yeah, what's her name? The Sea Maid. What? For fast answers in a car, boat, or a home improvement loan, see NCNB. Well, it's up to you, son, but that's an awfully funny name for a girl. NCNB, equal housing lender. CSC News Time is 8.07. Congressman Arthur Ravenel says complete details on the tragic USS Stark incident should be released within about a week. Ravenel just recently returned from a trip to Central America, and he admits that despite all the problems we face daily in the United States, it's wonderful to be back home. I spent a... Some time in Managua, Nicaragua, and looked uh, the face of of communism and left wing slavery in the in the face. You just don't know how valuable freedom is. You just cannot appreciate freedom until you see an area which does not have any freedom. Ravenel also announced that he'll be opening a new congressional office in Estill. He cites the need for better representation for the people of Hampton County. More government salaries are now public information, and government bodies can no longer hold secret meetings. Now that Governor Carol Campbell has signed the state's new Freedom of Information Act into law, Campbell calls the new stronger law a great service for South Carolinians. CSE News Time, 808. Charlie Hall's hot forecast in a minute. Here's Lipton Sun Tea Lover, Don Meredith. Hi, Stanley. Don, I've been running around in the sun all day. I'm so thirsty. Well, I've got just a thing for you. Huh? The clean, sun-brewed taste of Lipton Sun Tea. Sun Tea. Oh, terrific. I'm burning up and you're giving me sun tea. I need something cold. Stanley, when you brew up sun tea, you get great taste in iced tea. Don Meredith. When you watch my lips, the sun is hot, hot, hot. I need something cold, cold, cold. Stanley, see this jar? Yeah. Well, I filled it up with a gallon of cold water. Yeah. Added some Lipton family-sized tea bags. And I put it in the sun for a few hours. Now, I got sun tea. Oh, Don, I'm very happy for you. But please, get to the point. Point is, you pour this over ice, and you get a clean, sun-brewed taste that's real refreshing. Here you go, Stanley. Mmm, that is good. And it really does have a, uh... uh sun-brewed taste? Exactly. <laughs> 
Then let's go out in the sun. Brew up another batch of Lipton sun tea. Sun? No, no more sun. What about moon tea? Or rain <laughs> tea? Maybe snow tea? Ah, uh, Stanley. According to Charlie Hall, you'll be able to make all the sun tea you want today. The very dry eastern counties of our state will welcome rain from any source, including that tropical depression, but it's too far, way on off our coast, still about 775 miles southeast of Charleston, and showing no signs of moving in this direction. A lot of rain out there, but it is not, uh, it is not moving toward our area. For today, just look for what we've been having all week long, continued hot, humid, uh, a stray shower, a thunderstorm, late afternoon, early evening. That's about the only chance for some rain. 90 for today's high again, inland 82 for the beaches. For tonight, clear to partly cloudy, quite warm, 68 for a low. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, hot and humid again. We go to 92 tomorrow, inland, 82 for the beaches. And the forecast uh, extending on through the rest of this week, through Friday, Saturday, more of the same, with no general rain in sight. From the CSC Weather Center, Charlie Hall. Have a good day. High tide in about a half an hour at 8.38 this morning. Right now, it's mostly sunny. Enjoy these temperatures while you can. 72 this hour in North Charleston, 70 degrees downtown. I'm Charlie Davis, WCSC News. Now, Ted Byrne with more of the music you grew up with on the station you grew up with. 1390 CSC. All righty, we've got 10 after 8, 8, 10 our time. Uh, Charlie, when you eat out, and you probably eat out a lot, don't you? Mm, there's some fast food now and then. Oh, okay. There's some cooking, too. Do, do you really? Uh-huh. What are, you, what are you good at cooking? Oh, I can defrost with the best of them. Oh, that a boy. Okay. <laughs> when, when you eat out, what is probably the one most thing that you eat out the most? Oh, boy. I guess it would probably probably be burgers. Burgers. If, yeah. Very good. That uh, uh, In a poll that was taken by the Gallup people, uh, they surveyed 500 adults. So far, you fit all the qualifications. Mm -hmm. And uh, 30% of those polled uh, said they take out uh, a, uh, a burger. Now, they were also uh, able to choose more than one item. What do you think was number two? Mm, tacos? No, 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 no. A soft drink. Oh, a soft drink. That's right. 20% of those polled said a soft drink. Next item? Fish and chips. Fries. Okay. Boy, you're doing great on this. Hey, okay. chips are fries, you know. Well, they. you're right. Okay, you okay. were half right. You were half right. Half Excuse right. Me. Well, I'm 15, half, half something, right? 15% of those <laughs> said fries. Uh, what was the next item that is uh, the most favorite takeout food? Sushi? Uh, chicken. Okay. Chicken. <laughs> Sushi. It's a little messy. And then the fourth most favorite takeout, or fifth, I should say, most favorite takeout food was... Gee, uh, I think we've covered all the bases there, haven't we? Well, we got hey, burgers, we got drinks, we got fries, we got chicken, and a chocolate malt. No, no, sorry, it was pizza. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's send out for some. Uh, okay, what, what do you, you want, thick crust or thin? Uh, I'll eat anything but anchovies. Oh, yeah, well, that, that, that's good. Uh, you like, like, pepperoni? Yeah, mushroom. Mushroom, yeah, yeah, extra cheese. And, uh, uh, please. Yeah, well, let's see if I can deliver it in 30 minutes. If not, we get a free. Enough. That's right. Blueberry here. 1390 CSC, Fats Domino in Blueberry Hill, Million Dollar Music from 1956. Do you remember the uh, sitcom on TV where a young man used to sing that song all the time? Do you remember which one it was? Uh, mm. uh, my thrill. You know, oh, uh, yeah, Richie Cunningham used yes, to do it on, yes. uh, on Happy, uh, Days. Happy Days. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Okay, you passed the test. <laughs> speaking, speaking of old things and happy days, Ooh. Charlie Hall says, mostly sunny today, looking for a high about 90 inland. If you're going down to the beach, it'll be a little cooler, about 8 degrees cooler, as a matter of fact, 82 on the beach. And we're looking for clear to partly cloudy skies tonight and a low near 68. And, of course, we've got that slight chance of a late day shower or thunder shower. You know, Charlie throws that in there just to kind of cover his... Self. And uh, right now we've got 73 in North Charleston, 70 downtown at 1390 CSC. And here's somebody That's else. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, man. That, that'd be cool. Here's a man who we're going to tell us what happened in sports. Here to coach. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Larry Bird's theft of a less than crisp inbounds pass from Detroit's Isaiah Thomas led to a Celtics basket with one second left last night, giving the Celts a 108 107 victory over the Detroit Pistons. Bird picked off the floater from Thomas and fed it to Dennis Johnson, who was headed down the lane for the hoop. And here's how Bird described it. Just didn't throw a good hard pass. He just lofted up there and, and it stayed up in the air, you know. And uh, it, it seemed like it took it forever to get to Lambeer. And I was just lucky enough to get my left hand in there and then bat it away. And, and um, once I turned and seen DJ streaking down the lane, I knew I wasn't going to shoot it. I was just going to give it to him. The win gives Boston a 3-2 edge over the Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals. Game 6 tomorrow night. 
The Philadelphia Flyers had to win at Edmonton last evening to stay alive in the Stanley Cup Finals, and they did. The Flyers went into Gretzky Land and pulled off a 4-3 victory over the Oilers, forcing Game 6 of the Finals. Edmonton leads the set three games to two. Last night on Sportsline, I talked with one of the greatest ever to play the game, Montreal's legendary Maurice the Rocket, Richard, and I asked the Rocket who he picks in the Stanley Cup Finals. So far, I think the Oilers are a little bit too strong. But they'll have to go to Game 6 to do it. In the American League last night, the Twins, Red Sox, Royals, and Tigers all won. In the National League, Doyle Alexander back on the active list after getting free agency and nobody else picking him up. Pitches the Braves to a 5-4 win over the Cards. The Reds, Astros, Phillies, Expos, and Mets all win. Charleston Rainbows down the tubes last night, one to nothing, at the hands of Charleston, West Virginia. Heck, the Bows couldn't get any hitting. No support for Omar Oliveras. Yesterday in the French Open Tennis Championships, a major upset. Francis Henri Leconte was beaten, as was 12 seeded Pat Cash. But the big deal: Argentina's Horacio de la Pena, who nobody much has ever heard of, eliminated John McEnroe in four sets. I'm Patrick Joyce, WCSE Sports, and that's the way the ball bounces. Well, I don't have time to sit around and whine. I'm looking after my family, working overtime. But when it's time to have fun, I ain't gonna get left behind. If iron poor blood is slowing you down, remember, 3S Tonic has ten times your minimum daily requirement of iron, plus vitamins and minerals. So read the label and demand 3S, the super strong supplement. I take 3S. Tonic, I ain't gonna get left behind. Liquid or tablets. Live 5 News with Bill Sharp and Barbara Mackey. Backed by a team of specialists covering the low country and the Midlands to keep you better informed. Health reporter Debbie Chard. Drew Griffin, police reporter. North Charleston reporter Karen Greer. Carolina camera Michael Trouche. Jed Mescon, feature reporter, and sports specialists Warren Pepper and Mark Morgan. Live 5 News, the one and only. With every sunrise, with every season, you love it just a little more. From the Ashley to the Cooper, the Battery to the Sandy Shore. Country's News Authority, 1390 WCSC Charleston. It's 827. Good morning. I'm Charlie Davis, 1390 WCSC News. Coming up in less than three minutes, Paul Harvey's news and comment. The House is making some major changes in an auto insurance reform bill already passed by the state Senate. The House has considered about 50 amendments to that bill. Marlboro Representative Jack Rogers says one that was approved changes the rating system for women drivers under 25 years of age. They would have seen on the Senate uh, bill a substantial increase in uh, insurance rates uh, to bring them up uh, on the same uh, level as uh, young men. The auto insurance reform bill is a pet project of Governor Carol Campbell. Its intent is to force bad drivers to pay more for insurance than they're paying now. Right now, a check of the traffic from Janet Conklin. CSC Mobile 12, as usual, was checking out the old Cobra for us. That's looking okay this morning. When you get off the old Cobra, though, onto East Bay Street, if you have to do that, be on the lookout because one lane is closed for a little bit of road construction. Maybe they're smoothing out that other lane. In any case, it is one lane through there. Kind of slow getting off the old Cobra on to East Bay this morning. Elsewhere, no problems in the low country and traffic right now other than the normal ones. 
Janet Conklin, WCSE Traffic Watch. The Charleston County School Board has decided to let Superintendent Dr. Robert Burke get started on 40 recommendations from the State Department of Education. All of them but one, that is. The board's decided to hold off making any changes in the school system's promotion policy. The recommendations from the state all concern changes that need to be made to get the seriously impaired label lifted from Charleston County schools. At a special meeting last night, board member John Graham Altman minced no words on how he felt about it all, calling the Columbia bureaucrats mean-spirited and saying they don't know what they're doing. South Carolina's budget for the next fiscal year is up in the air, but a compromise committee is scheduled to start work on that budget today. The Senate passed its version of the appropriations bill in a 23-hour session that ended Saturday morning. CSC News Time is 829. Paul Harvey's news and comment is next. Grandy's service home style meals To all the people who got wheels Chicken, ribs, and country steak And you never ever have to wait I mean, home cooking, pack to go Even for a hurry and joe Load the kids and get it to go At Grandy's, your king of the road yeah, at every Grandy's drive through you can get any of their complete home-style meals packed to go. So when you want to take some good food home or along for the drive, remember this. Grandy's serves home-style meals to all the people who've got wheels. When you want a meal to go at Grandy's, you're king of the road. Grandy's, when you just can't wait for a home-cooked meal. Paul Harvey, News and Comment, brought to you by Wayne Pet Foods, the pet food professionals. Now, Paul Harvey News. Good morning, Americans. Yesterday's gigantic stock market rally was triggered by strong dollars and weak gold. Today again, on World Money March this morning, strong dollars and weak gold. Near Delta Junction, Alaska, a spreading forest fire, a section of the Alaska Highway is closed. In Washington, congressional investigators today resume their investigation of the controversy. Bless them, bless them. There are, there, there are 3,937 newspeople in Washington, D.C. who have absolutely nothing to write or report about. That's right. News people in D.C. outnumber members of Congress 10 to 1. Wow, a political upset in Kentucky. All of the smart money was betting John Y. Brown would be nominated governor again. Then out of nowhere came a self-made bookseller named Wallace Wilkinson. He proposed a state lottery that captured public fancy. Wilkinson spent his own money campaigning, and by a comfortable margin, he has won. He is the Democrat nominee, and Democrats outnumber Republicans in Kentucky more than two to one. Omaro had a new book all ready for publication. The book has been canceled, will not be published. It was to have been a book about the life and the ideas of Gary Hart. By the way, the title they had chosen was One Man's Luck. Now page two. In the fledgling science of nutrition, we are all learners, but one of the leading learners is Dr. Gary Price Todd. His books on nutrition are contemporary Bibles on that subject. In his newest revised edition, he notes that the new food for our pets has been so improved that the food adds half a lifetime to the life of a dog or a cat. And he thinks that humans could do the same thing for themselves if they would, but they won't. Well, anyway, Dr. Todd and you will want to know that the research scientists who perfected Wayne dog food and Wayne cat food, I mean, these are the scientists who added that half a lifetime to the life of your pet. They now have created something even better, providing optimum nutrition with less bulk. Your dog will be satisfied and nourished, but with less food intake. And with Wayne Dog Food, you're going to get more protein per dollar than from any other. Locate your nearest Wayne Pet Food professional. Just dial 1-800, then dial K-9-BONUS. Seattle has lost a landmark. Ray's boathouse burned. Ten nearby boats went with it. 
New Orleans chef Paul Prudhomme, who taught our nation Cajun cooking, has undergone gallbladder surgery at Oxner, doing fine. In the spotlight, Steve Garvey of the Padres is out for the season, needs surgery on that ailing arm. Oh, you know, we are swimming faster and faster. Every one of Johnny Weissmuller's Olympic records has been broken by a high schooler. Every one of Mark Spitz's Olympic records has already been broken by a woman athlete. A Cornell study says that much of the improvement is conditioning, but that we're also swimming faster because of nylon. Synthetic fibers move through the water more readily than waterlogged wool or cotton. Capitalism has another foot in the door in the USSR. The Soviet national tennis teams have signed a four-year agreement to promote Nike shoes. From the mailbag, alcohol blend fuels have proved themselves. As car fuel, they do burn better and cleaner. Cities where automobile exhaust pollution is a menace, such as Phoenix, Arizona, should require all motorists to burn alcohol fuel and all filling stations to provide it. End quote. Robert Johnson, Phoenix, Arizona. Founder Jim Baker of the PTL Club told Nightline last night that Jerry Falwell has seized control of that evangelical empire. If you're interested, I'll have the Reverend Falwell's response during our noontime visit today. One thing more to the husbands of Japan. This is a message from your Prime Minister Nakasone. Learn to call your wife by name. Learn your wife's name and then call her that. As is most Japanese men calling their wives will call out Oyomae. Oyomae. Roughly, that, that translates, hey, you, Paul Harvey. Good day. Listen again for Paul Harvey's news and comment midday at 12.15 during the CSC News at Noon. And we'll have your forecast in a minute. Have you got time for a quick question? Would you be interested in living in a home like this? A home on the marsh, but less than a mile from the beach, with a harbor view and an open deck and a screen porch to make sure you enjoy it? A home with nine-foot ceilings and the latest European kitchens where hardwoods and terracotta tile and marble and lush carpets set off every room, where a pool was surrounded by terrace decking, with a poolside party house and a kitchen inside and outside, a barbecue pit and an oyster pit and all that right next to the tennis courts. It almost sounds funny when you make a list of all the things you'd like to have like that, but I'm not, I'm not making any of this up. I'm talking about a real place here. Simmons Point. It's a private condominium neighborhood in Mount Pleasant. I didn't even mention the grounds or the fountains or the fact that they're so close to the beach but still on the Mount Pleasant side of the Ben Sawyer Bridge because well, I didn't think you believe me. I don't know whether I'd believe me if I just heard about it. I'd, I'd have to see it with my own eyes. And I think you should, too. Simmons Point at 1550 Ben Sawyer Boulevard in Mount Pleasant. Open every day from 120,000. CSC Coastal Weather at 836. Charlie Hall says another sunny, hot, and humid day today. Tomorrow as well. Slight chance of a late-day thunderstorm. Highs up to 90 or maybe 91 inland. About 82 on the beaches. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy. The low near 68. In the harbor, winds east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots today. 10 knots or less tonight. Average seas less than a foot. High tide is just one minute away at 838. Low tide, 230 this afternoon. Right now, it's mostly sunny. 72 in North Charleston, 70 downtown. I'm Charlie Davis, WCSC News. Next news, 9 o'clock. Breaking stories as they occur. Now Ted Byrne with more Million Dollar Music on 1390 CSC. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. We've got 23 and a half in front of 9 o'clock on this Wednesday morning. Thirteen ninety CSC here on this so oh, beautiful Wednesday morning. Boy, I tell you, it'd be a good day to go out to the beach. It's looking like eighty-two degrees on the beaches if you're headed that way, or, or if you're out in traffic, it's probably near ninety inland and eighty-two on the beaches. Let, let's find out what things are like in traffic. Here she is, the traffic checker herself, Janet Cotton. Well, if you're in traffic and you're on East Bay Street, you're probably hitting about hundred and nine right now because one lane of East Bay coming off the Old Cooper is closed. Not much warning either when you come off the Old Bridge. Just one lane right there. It was like this yesterday, too, so they may be working out there for a couple of days. I tell you what, if they work until they get the whole street straightened out, they're going to be out there until 1999. In any case, traffic is kind of tied up in that area right now with some road construction. That's really the only problem we have right now. There was a wreck on Savannah Highway by West Ashley Toyota. That one has been cleared up now. Janet Conklin, WCSC Traffic Watch. Mm -hmm. 
Martha Lack from Terry, Mississippi, tells us how PC Headache Powder helps her keep going. I was always the one bringing home the stray dogs and cats. When you really care. Now I've got a farm with 50 cows and three horses. And you've got to be there. Every day I'm filling feeders for them, bailing hay for them. That's the time to take PC. The work and the heat can bring on a big boomer of a headache. When the pain keeps growing. BC is the only pain reliever I buy for myself. But you gotta keep going. It's fast, and I want something to help keep me going. That's the time to take BC. These animals are depending on me. I only know it works for me. When I help deliver a calf, I really feel I've done something. When the pain keeps growing. But you gotta keep going. That's the time to take me. PC Original Formula and Special Arthritis Strength Formula use as directed. Summertime in the low country means a lot of things. Trips to the beach, long hot days, and parties into the night. And let's face it, it really isn't a party around here till the shagging begins. Now, if you live in the low country and you don't know how to shag, <laughs> it's like living in Florida and not having a tan. Maybe you would like to learn to shag, but you can't really afford those studio shag lessons. Hey, don't worry, because Shagging USA is just what you've been looking for. Shagging USA is a fun instructional videotape, and it's only $29.95. Why, lessons start at more than twice that. Play the Shagging USA tape again and again for your friends and family in the comfort and privacy of your own home. And pay just one low price, $29.95. Now, here's how to get yours. It's easy. Send a check or a money order for $29.95 to Shagging USA, P.O. Box. 186 Charleston 29402 or just drop by 478 East Bay Street between 8.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. and pick yours up. After that, there's nothing standing in the way between you and all those great summertime parties. Shaggin' USA. 14 minutes in front of 9 o'clock and this is, of course, the last week of the TV ratings month. You know, one potato, two potato, couch potato, four. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, Miss Universe tonight will be... Uh, will be uh, uh, no, 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 last that night. was last night. Miss Chile. That's right, that's right. Chile today is Wednesday, sweetie, not I'm sorry. Tuesday. I'm sorry, excuse me. Ted's Chile today, hot step. tamale. That's okay. Right. Uh -huh. This is, of course, day three of the National Spelling Bee in D.C. How do you how do you spell relief? Hmm, By I the way, yeah, I wonder, what, wonder what they would answer if, if, they, uh, if they spelled the, that other thing. Also, though, uh, one more week to go until the Sergeant Pepper CD will be out. Oh, that's going to be a good one. Yes, 20 years ago today. What actually. a great album. Isn't that, isn't that something? I think I know all the words to all the songs. Do you really? Mm -hmm. Are you that big of a Beatle fan? No, I'm not, but I just like that, that one album. I like oh. the Beatles, all right? You know, I've got the red album and the blue album, uh -huh. but... Yeah, that's just like their greatest hits. I'm not really a big Beatle file, but I, I like Sgt. Pepper's. I think I'm, if I ever get a CD player, I'll buy that one. There you go. And that that's straight from the multifaceted, multicolored Janet Conklin. <laughs> Carolina. Who, by your own admission, has the red one and the green one? And... The coach is up next with a look at sports. After we do a little beach music, a little shag in here with the embers. I love beach music. 1390 CSC with the embers and I love beach music. And I'm kind of partial to that. And I know you are. And you all get out there and kind of dance around. Be a good day to go out onto the beach if uh, that's in your plans. Mostly sunny, hot and humid today. Kind of work on that tan. Looking for a high near 90 inland to 82 on the beaches. Still warm enough to get that tan, but... Uh, you know, it'll be fairly comfortable. Tonight, look for a low of 68, and right now we've got 73 in North Charleston and 70 downtown at 1390 CSC. Well, Boston pulled it off on the parquet floor. Now they got to go back to Detroit. Yes. And then uh, all the East Coast teams beat the West Coast teams in those late-night games last night. Braves won, got a good performance. Mm -hmm. Rainbows lost another one. Rainbows close out their homestand tonight, by the way. Yes, ten nights. You managed to survive it quite well. Yeah, so far so good. And uh, then they get the famous... Except for the other night when you finked out. That's right. Then they get the famous chicken coming in on, uh, on Monday. Yeah, Ted Giannullis will be in. Greek chicken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hold the potatoes, will you? Yeah. And then uh, they've got a baseball camp. Uh, coming up. Can I can I tell the phone? Yeah, mini camp. Uh, when is that? The 19th through the 21st of June. It's got a they've got a baseball mini camp mm -hmm. for youngsters age 8 through 12, guys and gals, and uh, you'll uh, you'll get all kinds of good stuff plus instruction from 
Tony Torsha. I really enjoy that part of Sportsline, by the way, where you have Tony on every night. Yeah. I usually listen to that on my way to the ballpark, and uh, that's, that's kind of fun. In fact, He's fun to talk to, and we've gotten into this thing about not just, okay, who won last night? Yeah. Who are you going to throw tonight? Yeah. Talk a little bit about the ball game. About and, baseball. Uh, he's well, good. Last night you talked about young managers in the minor yeah. leagues and stuff, and that yeah. was pretty good. I, In fact, I was listening on my, on my way to the ballpark last night, and I got out of the car, and I went, and I sat and kind of continued your conversation with Tony a little bit last night in the dugout. He was sitting there watching uh, infield practice. Mm-hmm. I got the lineups and chatted with him. But what a great guy. If you're a baseball, He really is. If you're a baseball fan, and I mean, you really like the game, you ought to try to come to College Park and just sit and chat with Tony Torsha. Tony's not a... Oh, how can he, I say this and have it come out right? He, he, he's, <laughs> he's not... I know what you're going to say. Most, perhaps the most polished, eloquent guy you ever ran into. I mean, he's not going to, he's not a Rock Hudson. He's not going to win any smoothie awards. Right. But he is very, very nice guy. He's very personable. Right. He knows the game. You know who he reminds me a lot? And I don't know this man personally, never met him, but he seems to be a lot like Tommy Lasorda. Yeah. And he's been likened to him by a lot of people. Oh, oh. Yeah. Both, uh, I think, have a passion for pasta after uh, <laughs> yeah. watching how he censures up his belt. But He's anyway. just a nice guy. Yeah, he is. Well, tell us about some of the other nice things that happened. Okay, well, we're going to stay right with the Bows for just a minute. We mentioned uh, they're closing out a 10-night homestand tonight at College Park. They've uh, been out there. Let's see. They won two out of four with Charleston, West Virginia. They'll play the tiebreaker tonight at 7.30. Last night... The Wheelers got an unearned run off Omar Olivares and beat the Rainbows one to nothing. A tough, tough game to lose. But they'll go at it again tonight, and it could be interesting. We're going to do Sportsline from College Park tonight, by the way. Perhaps you've caught on to the fact that we're going to have 25-cent beverage night at the ball yard. Now, the newspaper this morning mentioned this, and all they talked about was beer, but uh, they didn't tell the whole story. It's going to be 25-cent everything. Cokes. Whatever they sell to drink out there, it's going to be a quarter. So don't let the paper throw you. Uh, there will be 25-cent beer, but uh, not tonight. Not tonight. That's next Wednesday. Okay. Legendary sports writer Grantland Rice runs, quote, when the, uh, when the one great scorer comes to mark against your name. He writes, not if you won or lost, but how you played the game. Remember that? Well, history will write that during the 40s and 50s. Montreal's Maurice Rocket Richard played hockey better than anybody. Last night on Sportsline, as the Stanley Cup Finals geared up for Game 5 at Edmonton, I talked with the Rocket and asked him how Wayne Gretzky of Edmonton would have stacked up with the greats of the NHL in Richard's heyday. Wayne Gretzky, if he would have played in the NHL when there was only 16, he would have been in first position. He would have had, had I don't think, as much goal, but uh, as much more points than anybody else. But I don't think he would have been ahead uh, by so many points like he is today. I think the league at 16 was a stronger league than 21. There's no doubt about that. And what a kick it was to talk with Maurice Richard, the Rocket. I'm Patrick Joyce, WCSC Sports. That's the way the ball bounces. The University of South Carolina Career Center is now publishing a placement bulletin for all USC alumni. This bulletin will put employers in direct contact with about 7,000 USC alumni who have two to five years experience in a particular field. The benefits work both ways. Companies benefit from having a select market for prospective employees, and USC alumni benefit from having access to employment opportunities throughout the state. The new service also will save employers time and money. By using the Alumni Placement Bulletin, employers can eliminate hours of sorting through stacks of unqualified respondents to newspaper ads. A small fee will be charged to employers and alumni for the use of the bulletin. It will be published every two weeks. For more information, call 777-7556 or write Carol Lyles, Alumni Career Services, USC, Columbia, South Carolina, 29208. Well, it means I got to head for the barn. <laughs> well, not for the barn, but I'm out of here, okay? ABC News is next. The South Carolina Broadcasters Station of the Year. 
1390 WCSC Charleston. I'm Charlie Davis. Coming up on CSC News, a conference committee to work out a compromise state budget gets off and running today with Berkeley Senator Rembert Dennis as its chairman. And Vanna White comes home with autograph pen in hand. We'll have details and Charlie Hall's hot and humid forecast right after ABC brings you the world at 9 o'clock. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Chet Douglas with the latest from ABC News. Taxes, budgets, the iran contramess? Which is uppermost in the minds of Congress and the President? None of the above. Right now, the top concern among top government leaders is how far the U.S. should go to keep the vital Persian Gulf shipping lanes open. Navy ships have already escorted a Kuwaiti merchant ship through the Gulf, and soon, Kuwaiti tankers will be flying U.S. flags. Democratic Senator James Sasser of Tennessee, just back from a visit to the Persian Gulf, calls that a, a very risky proposition. It substantially raises the risk of an armed confrontation with revolutionary Iran. Another Democrat, John Glenn of Ohio, leaves for the area today. Now, he disagrees with President Reagan. The president does not believe U.S. presence will increase the likelihood of war. But Senator Glenn says we'd better be ready to put up or shut up. If the president says we're going we're gonna to speak like Rambo, then we better not act like Bambi. Well, we better be prepared to strike back if we're hit. And that means maybe even following uh, people in hot pursuit into Iran or other places if that is necessary. The president wants allies to help out by providing some of the support, including air cover, since they too have a stake in the valuable cargo that travels the Gulf. I'll have more for you after this. It happened at a quaint Rocky Mountain campsite. Kids, get the marshmallows out of the tent. Okay, Dad. <laughs> Say, honey, look at what just walked out of the woods. Why, it's Bigfoot. <laughs> Isn't he cute? He's as big as a semi. Leonard, you got to get a picture. All right, kids, Mom, getting close to Bigfoot there. Now, everybody say cheese. Cheese. <laughs> Great vacation pictures come once in a lifetime. So trust those moments to goof proof on time. Kmart film developing at low Kmart prices. And no hidden costs for more prints than you need. Get single prints or doubles for a low Kmart price. Oh, look, here's the snapshot of me and the kids with Bigfoot. Yeah, but I cut off the top of Bigfoot's head. No, it was shaped like that. Keep memories alive and photo costs down at Kmart, America's favorite store. Do you have a student loan or maybe you know somebody who does? Well, a lot of people have trouble paying back those loans after they graduate, and now the government's going to give those folks some help. They'll be called smart loan accounts set up by an act of Congress. They consolidate student loans into a single loan and stretch out the payments. ABC's Richard Davies says there are good points and bad points. By stretching out their loans up to 25 years, people can lower their monthly payments. But the main drawback is that borrowers will be paying back those loans for a longer period of time and possibly at a higher interest rate than for the original loans. The new deal applies to people who still owe more than $5,000 with loans due within the next 10 years. The Iran-Contra hearings are picking up again about now, actually, in Washington with retired Air Force Colonel Robert Dutton set to testify. He's said to have directed arms to the Nicaraguan Contras and to have talked about other aid with an assistant to the vice president. Turns out that the Soviet Union's been doing a little arms business with Iran, too. According to today's New York Times, a French weapon dealer who saw the U.S. arms sales as sloppy arranged an $18 million sale of Soviet weapons to Iran. Police frogmen in Ontario have been busy searching the edge of Lake Ontario, but not for a body, but for a baseball. This is a special baseball that was signed by Babe Ruth in 1925. Some young thieves who stole it from the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame tossed it into the lake. Well, Japan may not see eye to eye with the U.S. on some trade issues at the moment, but an aide to Prime Minister Yashiro Nakasone is making sense on one thing anyway. He says Japanese husbands can help improve the status of women in their society by calling their wives by their names instead of the Japanese equivalent of, hey, you. I'm Chet Douglas, ABC News. CSC News time is 9.04. I'm Charlie Davis. Good morning. A bill that strengthens South Carolina's Freedom of Information statute has now been signed into law by Governor Carol Campbell. The governor says the changes will enable the public to find out more about how government is run. I believe that uh, we're in a pretty good position now with uh, the strengthening of the FOI and that South Carolina uh, and South Carolinians 
and can have a lot more confidence that they know what's going on in their government and how it's being run. The changes in the law make more government salaries public information. They also prevent government bodies from acting behind closed doors. Senator Rembert Dennis of Berkeley County has been named chairman of the Joint Legislative Conference Committee. That'll be working out differences between House and Senate versions of the budget bill. Representative Bob McClellan was named vice chairman. The conference committee starts its work today. $11,000 worth of seed is now in the hands of farmers in the lower part of the state, and that includes farmers here in the Tri-County area. The Farmers Assistance Relief Mission, also known as FARM or FARM, presented the seed yesterday. Farm founder Mike Rose says the seed will be used for planting to feed livestock. A lot of the farmers wiped out uh, due to the drought. Uh, now have to replant, but they don't have this, the money to replant this spring because uh, they didn't uh, get cash from their crops last summer because they were destroyed. Rose says it's more economical to give the farmers seed than to transport hay from outside the state. Vanna Speaks and Vanna Signs. Vanna Speaks is the name of Vanna White's recently published autobiography, and this Saturday, the Wheel of Fortune letter-turner will be coming home to North Myrtle Beach to promote and sign her book for fans. A Kroger Save-On Food and Drug Store co-manager says Ms. White will be promoting the book at the Myrtle Beach Kroger store for about an hour, starting this Saturday at 12.30 in the afternoon. CSC News Time is 9.06.